Good morning, everyone. How are you all today? This is the last nice warm day before it hits, so go out and enjoy it. Because you it's gonna be in the 30s tomorrow, so and maybe some snow. Um, we welcome you to First Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you are here. We pride ourselves in being an open and affirming congregation. We like everybody to come and be part of our family, no matter who you are, where you've been, who you love, what you do, anything about you. We want, we like difference, we like diversity, and we love you to come and join us. We welcome everybody, and we also welcome our online worshipers. So if you would help me in welcoming them and waving at them and saying, Good morning, glad you're with us as well. Please drop a note in the chat box and let us know that you are worshiping with us today. First Presbyterian is a church where you can come and bring your doubts and bring your questions and we will talk about them together. We might not find all the answers because you know, God is too big for that, but we'll struggle to find them with each other. Um, I would like to invite you now to stand and greet your neighbor in any way that's comfortable for you and pass the peace of Christ. So as you all know, uh, leading worship is not my first gig, so of course I got things out of order a little bit. Please forgive me for that. I wanted to um, tell you a couple of announcements, and that is that we are having an Advent workshop downstairs following worship today. We're going to be putting together bags for our We Care members and our uh, post-high school young adults. So please come down and help us. We have 50 bags to make, guys, so we need everybody's help downstairs a fellowship and um, some crafting and if you don't want to craft just hang out and do fellowship and encourage those that are crafting so um, it's not hard it's just something nice to send to our people who are not with us every Sunday and then I wanted to tell you that um, Jim's class on the Advent class will be starting next Sunday on December 1st and then also following the Advent workshop, we're going to decorate the sanctuary. So stick around and help us do that. We'll be hanging the greens and decorating the trees and making the sanctuary beautiful for the Advent and Christmas season. Philippians 4.4 calls us to rejoice in the Lord always. And Psalm 100 tells us why. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. As we lift our voices in praise and worship this morning, may our hearts overflow with gratitude, joy, and thanksgiving. God alone is worthy of our praise. God alone is our strength and our song. And I'd like to read to you some verses from one of my favorite hymns. Since our theme is thankful people are joyful people, this, song, or this hymn is called I Come With Joy. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved, and free, the life of Jesus to recall, in love laid down for me, in love laid down for me. The spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such friendship better known, alive among us here, alive among us here. And with that, let's stand and worship God with our opening hymn. <laughs>
Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and joy. As we gather to worship, we give thanks for your presence, and we rejoice in your goodness, your mercy, and your unfailing love. You have given us so much, and we have countless blessings for which to be thankful. We are grateful for the gift of life, the beauty of creation, and the love of family and friends. As we lift our voices in praise and worship, we ask for your peace to guard our hearts and minds so that we can truly be present in this moment. But God, we also come seeking your forgiveness. We acknowledge our shortcomings and sins, and we ask for your mercy and grace to cleanse us and renew us. Help us to forgive others as you have forgiven us and to live in harmony and peace with one another. Lord, fill us with your spirit and guide us in our worship today. May our hearts overflow with joy and may everything you do, we do and say bring glory to your name. We pray this in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Bill Choir. Um, I'd like to invite the children, youth, and young at heart to come forward, please. Good morning. It's good to see all of you today. So uh, did you go to the movie Inside Out? Have you ever seen that movie? Have you seen the movie Inside Out too? Okay. Um, so who's your favorite character? Anger is your favorite character. Anybody else? Have a... Embarrassment is your favorite character. Who else has a favorite character? Anyone? Okay, TJ. Uh, MJ. Sorry, MJ. Anxiety, my goodness. Don't you like joy, for Pete's sake? <laughs> joy is kind of the star of the show, really, you know. If it weren't for joy, they would all fall apart. She holds the group together. And so today, in our um, sermon, we're going to talk about joy and what it means to have joy. And joy isn't just being happy, because happy is something that we have for a little while, and then pretty soon something else comes up, and then we're angry and anxious and embarrassed and all those other things, right? But joy sticks around. Joy can be with us even when we have those other feelings, because it's something way down deep inside, and it comes from knowing God's love. And that's what keeps us going even when things are not so great. So in the movies, the Inside Out movies, it was joy that kind of kept everybody going. And they, but they worked together together. But Joy is the one that kept him going because she could see the possibilities and she could have hope in what was going to happen. So we're going to talk about Joy today and uh, let's say a prayer about that. Dear God, we thank you so much that you give us so much love that we can have joy in our life even when we're going through 
terrible things, even when we're feeling sad, embarrassed, anxious, mad, all of the other feelings, joy is still down there because you have given us that gift. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks. You may go back to your seats. I forgot to look up my scripture ahead of time. Apologize for that. Today, our scripture reading comes from the book of Philippians, which is a letter written by Paul, and it's Philippians 4 through 9. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you, beloved people of God. Let's begin with a prayer. Dear loving God, open our hearts and minds to experience your message of love in this gathered community. Amen. During this season before Thanksgiving, Pastor Jim has invited us to think about what it means to be thankful. In his messages for the last two weeks, he has talked about thankfulness, including hope and gratitude. And today we're going to talk about thankfulness and joy. I would like to take a few minutes for you to turn around to your neighbors and tell your neighbors, talk, to, talk amongst yourselves, and talk about what brings you joy. Go. I knew it was dangerous to let you talk to your neighbors again because you do like it. What are you pointing at, Grant? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, at the end, okay. All right. Um, I forgot something else. Carrie was going to give us a quick update on OCC. We'll do that at the end. So thank you for sharing. Um, I hope that you had some interesting ideas for one another. Joy is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. But honestly, that definition is sorely lacking. It's a bit lame, in fact. Joy is so much more. This definition describes joy as a feeling that can come and go, but joy is actually a deep, long-lasting understanding of God's love. Our scripture verse comes from the letter to the church in Philippi. This letter is described as Paul's most joyful letter. And that's an amazing thing, considering he was in jail at the time. He was in a Roman prison, and he really didn't know what his future was going to be. He may have been facing a life sentence. He may have been facing execution. He didn't know what, but still, he felt joy. And he wanted to express that joy by writing to his beloved community in Philippi. 
He knew that he had God's love and that God's love was not going to abandon him. Paul also expressed joy that his imprisonment played a role in expanding the spread of the gospel. And Paul expressed joy because of the relationships he had with the Christian brothers and sisters in Philippi. Paul's thankfulness was full of joy. In this letter, Paul shared his love and admiration for the people of the church in Philippi. The congregation was an inspiration, comfort, and support to him. They even sent a care package and a missionary to see him in jail. He wrote this letter to help them share a unified vision and mission to share the love of God shown through Jesus. Paul's words to the church in Philippi gave encouragement. He tells them to rejoice or to practice living in joy. Joy is not just a feeling, it is an action. He tells them to be gentle with one another. This might be surprise you, but in difficult and challenging times, people are on edge. Anybody figure that out yet? Gentleness helps to smooth those edges. Paul reminds his friends that Christ is always near. They are never alone. They have a steadfast companion. He tells the people of Philippi to bring their concerns and worries to God, to pray for guidance and wisdom. Paul reminds the people that God will fill their hearts and minds with the peace that is beyond understanding, giving rest and peace to hearts that are sore. He tells the church that they must keep their minds on the important messages of the gospel and to not be, and not be distracted by trivial matters. Finally, Paul tells them to be inspired and to follow the examples of their leaders. Philippians chapter 4 tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. Always, not just in good times, not just when things are going our way, not just when there's a cause for celebration, but always. What does it mean to rejoice always, and how can we be joyful even in times of trouble? Joy, as it is experienced in the story of the Bible, has many qualities. First of all, joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Joy is a gift from God. It was the gift that came to the disciples on Pentecost, empowering them to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the people gathered from all over the world. Joy was the gift that brought the disciples out of the locked room into the world. They were able to overcome their grief and fear because the Holy Spirit helped them to understand that God's love will always win. God's love brought Jesus back from death. God's love gives us a new start every day. God's love is always faithful and abundant, and the disciples were given joy that inspired them to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Next, through God we choose joy. Because God has claimed us as beloved children and has created us in God's image, we can choose to live in joy. When Paul was a prisoner of the mighty Roman Empire, his future was uncertain. Or was it? Paul lived in the promises of the resurrection. He lived in the joy that comes from understanding God's faithful and steadfast love. Paul could have given in to despair. He could have wallowed in the injustice of his, of his situation, but instead he chose to live in joy, and he continued to live his calling by writing to encourage his brothers and sisters in the congregation at Philippi. Joy is the gift that helps us transcend our current troubles and discouragements. It is the gift that gives us resilience and helps us persevere. When the young Mary heard the news that she would give birth to the Messiah, she was perplexed and afraid, and she accepted the call from God. When she visited her cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth expressed her joy for Mary because Elizabeth believed God's promises and lived in the joy of God's love. Mary expressed her joy when she sang her hymn of praise. Mary's condition put her in a dangerous and vulnerable position, which was very real, but she lived in the joy of God's promises. She did not give in to fear or despair, but instead persevered in joy. Joy lasts forever while happiness does not. The Oxford Dictionary definition of joy compared it to happiness, but that is far from true. 
Happiness is a fleeting emotion. It comes and goes based on our circumstances. As children, we were happy when we got a new toy, but that happiness disappeared when the toy was broken or our sibling stole it from us. We are happy when we accomplish something, but when we fail at something else, the happiness is gone. We are happy when we win, when we make a new purchase or celebrate an occasion, but those events are fleeting. Happiness does not last, but joy is eternal. Joy comes from something deeper. I think joy is expressed at funerals. Funerals are filled with much grief and sadness, but when the friends and family come together and they share the memories of the loved ones or the lessons that they learned from their relationships with the loved ones, joy is there in the laughter, the shared experiences, and the love that was lived. Next, joy gives comfort and peace. When we live in the promise of God's love and faithfulness, we know the comfort and peace that comes from the presence of God. While the joy that comes from this knowledge can seem far away during times of trouble and distress, it is there along with the God who walks beside us. When Jesus appeared to his friends after his death and resurrection, he pronounced peace upon them. Jesus knew their worries and fears, and he gave the Holy Spirit to bring them peace. Peace compels us to live in the present and to let go of our concerns about the future. Peace compels us to look around and appreciate what we have. When the prophet Elijah was hiding in a cave in fear of his life, God spoke in the peace and utter silence to encourage Elijah. Peace is comforting. It is the deep breath that we take to refocus our energy and clear our minds. Peace comes from the joy of knowing and understanding the deep love that God has for us. Comfort and peace were the gifts that Paul received in prison from his friendship with the people of Philippi, his fellow servants, the servants of the gospel. Joy comes from hope in God's promises. When Paul was imprisoned, he still had hope. He saw hope in the people of the church of Philippi who were spreading the love of Christ in word and deed. He saw hope that the good news of Christ was being shared because of his imprisonment. Paul believed the world was being changed because of the hopeful message of Jesus. When Mary was carrying Jesus, the Messiah, she lived in hope. She believed the promises of God shared by the prophets about a Messiah that would change the world and turn it upside down. Even though she was scared and threatened, Mary's hope brought joy that empowered her to be God's servant and Jesus' mother. Finally, joy brings rest. Even when we are distressed, living in grief or confusion, we can rest in the knowledge that God is near, that Jesus walks with us, that God's blessings are all around. I am forever comforted by the knowledge that God is in charge and I am not. As humans, we want control of things. We want to understand what is happening. We want our questions to be answered. And that is not always in our power. God has the big picture, and I do not. I can rest in that. Everything is not about me, for which I am very thankful. I can live with that. The truth that God's love is faithful, eternal, steadfast, and abundant is joyful. We can take a breath and rest in that truth. So, okay, Disney nerds. You recognize this lovely person up there. Notice it is not anger, embarrassment, anxiety, or sadness. This is joy. Joy lives in our hearts and our brains, as we know from the movies Inside Out. Joy does not exist independently from other emotions. Joy lives with sadness, anxiety, embarrassment, and anger. Joy does not dismiss our experiences and feelings, but joy can bring us above them to give peace, comfort, hope, and rest. Joy always encouraged and lived in the hope of what could be. She keeps the group of emotions moving forward and focused. She does not control them, but leads them. 
joy lives in us. It comes as a gift from the Holy Spirit and is everlasting. When we take time to be thankful, we become joyful people. So you all got to share where you found joy. I get to share where I find joy. I find joy on Wednesdays and Sundays when I meet with our confirmation class. They are a lively bunch, and sometimes it's hard to keep the train on the track, but boy, we talk and we have great conversations. I find joy in watching my dog Fergus chase, chase squirrels. He really believes he's making a difference, but he's not. He's being the creature that God created him to be, and the sassy squirrels are being the creatures God created them to be. I find joy in our Alpha Explorers when they worked very hard to make cards for our veterans. I found joy in the middle school camping trip when the youth talked and shared stories around the campfire, learning more about the friends that they were with. I found joy on the high school camping trip when our students found rest and peace from their busy lives at home while connecting to God through nature. I found joy on our mission trips when pounding a simple nail into the frame of a house or serving a simple meal to a stranger connected our youth to service in Christ. I find joy in gathering with this community to encourage each other in living our faith. I find joy in the care and fellowship that our church family shared with our friend Tom, who needed a quiet place to rest while waiting for a new home. I find joy in the way our members welcome new people into our family. I was talking with my friend Dan Wild, who came last year for the Christmas program, and he said, I said, our church is friendly. He said, yeah, maybe a little too much. <laughs> And Dan's gregarious, so you're doing all right. We welcome people, and we're glad to have people that are different than us join us for worship. Joy is abundant when we live in the promises of God's love and share that love with all of God's people and all of God's creatures and all of God's world. Dear loving God, help us to live in joy. Amen. We'll sing our hymn, but you may stay seated. Please join me in prayer. Dear loving and faithful God, we are filled with joy knowing that you surround us with the love we have come to know through Jesus. We ask that you share joy, comfort, and peace with members of our family who are experiencing illness, distress, or loss. Help them to know your presence and love. 
Please be with the families of Carol Reese and Sandy Allen as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. We ask you to make us aware of our neighbors near and far, human, plant, or animal. Help us to see their needs and seek out ways that we can reach out to ensure that they can thrive and survive. Be with people who are experiencing the violence of war, the devastation of natural disasters and global warming, and the pain of judgment and prejudice. Help us to seek justice for our neighbors and all of creation. Help guide us, help guide the leaders of all nations to lead with fairness and equity, looking for the best ways to serve their people and others. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus, who teaches us every day to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Each week we offer an affirmation of faith as a way of sharing our belief that there is more than this world and God is worthy of our praise. I invite you to join me as we speak the words of our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, the creator, who blesses us with life and sustains us with love. We believe in Jesus Christ, who lived and died. In the Holy Spirit, the comforter and God, who fills us with joy and peace. We give thanks for creation, and the bounty of the earth, the love of friends and friends, and the fellowship of the church. And with grateful and joyful heart, we offer our praise to God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. All that is, all that was, and all there will be belong to God. We are just stewards of God's blessings. Let us now return to God in part what is his in whole. If you feel called and are able, offering baskets are located at the front and back of the worship space. Your offering can also be mailed to the church or dropped off in the church office. There's also a giving button on the FPC website. Your generosity and faithfulness is deeply appreciated. And now, please join me in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Holy One, we pray that you would take these gifts of our labor, our wealth, our time, and our lives, and all that we have and all that we are, our abundance, and even our poverty, and use them for the good in the world. We pray this in his name. Amen. You may stand for our closing hymn.
like to invite Carrie to come up and give us an update on OCC. You may be seated. I was going to be forgotten again. All right. So I have a little bit of a participation event here. If yesterday was your first time doing a packing party, stand up. And I know who you are. <laughs> if you did a new job at the packing party yesterday, stand up. Again, I know who you are. If you helped out at all at the, stay standing. If you helped out at all at the packing party yesterday, stand up. We're clearly missing a few. Um, if you helped out with the setup on Friday night, stand up. Good night again. I know who you are. <laughs> if you have donated. Stuff to fill a box this year. Stand up. Hey, there we go. If you donated money to ship the boxes, stand up. A few more. All righty. If you look around, this is what it takes to make this mission thrive and be a success. And even more than this, because I know there's some folks at home who participated. And this is what brings me joy, seeing all of these people make this mission a success to get these 350 shoe boxes to kids who are the future of this world and the church. So if you'd like to make donations, we can always use them to help make sure these boxes get to their final destination and to these kids. Thank you. Now, if you'll please stand for the benediction. Oh, wait. Um, uh, uh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read a hymn, though. <laughs> so I'm going to read you verse 5 from I Come With Joy as the benediction today. Together met, together bound, all that, all by... Hmm. Let me start again. Together met, together bound by all that God has done, we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one, the love that makes us one. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let's go into the world and serve. Amen.